a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of the many fine programs brought to you Sundays on NBC. Later this evening, listen to the NBC Star Playhouse with one of your favorite stars. Here, meet the press, America's number one newsmaking program. And be sure to keep tuned for the dramatic story of communism in America on Last Man Out. It's a wonderful lineup of great programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. The 2 p.m. from Chicago wasn't more than, oh, about 45 minutes late. That was practically a record for this time of year, what with the spring floods and all. Of course, later on in the summer, when things had dried up, it was more than likely the train had hit Rustville right on schedule. Once in a while, anyway. I climbed down from the buckboard Paul Poindexter had lent me and walked over to the platform. I guess I'd be able to recognize Clay Fenton, even though I'd never seen him before. I, it stood to reason that uh, there wouldn't be more than one 16-year-old boy getting off at Rustville Station, and Clay's mother had sent along a pretty complete description. He, five foot seven, thin, gangly, sandy hair, and a V-shaped scar on his forehead. The train had stopped now, and the conductor lowered some iron steps. The first person to step down was a drummer holding a big tapestry valise crammed full of samples. Behind him, there were two ladies. They didn't have any suitcases, just boxes, so I figured they'd only been as far as Fort Davidson on a shopping spree. After them, there didn't seem to be anybody else at all. Hmm. Well, now, I'm sure that letter had said Clay would be arriving on the 22nd. Hmm. Uh, say, uh, mister, yep. uh, this is the Tuesday train, isn't it? What day did you think it was? Oh, I know it's Tuesday, but sometimes, you know, I... Well, I was wondering if this could be Monday's train. I, I mean, you're not a day late, are you? Well, of course we're not a day late. We're right on time, practically. Uh-huh. Well, I was supposed to meet a young fellow traveling with you, about 16. He... Mr. Ponson? Oh. Uh, Clay? Yes, sir. Yeah, I didn't see you get off. I was riding in the last car. It took me a couple of minutes to get my things together. Oh, uh, this is the fellow you were looking for, mister? That's right. Thanks okay. very much. Whoop! Whoop! Wow. Uh, buckboard's right over here, Clay. Uh, here, let me give you a hand on that suitcase. Oh, it's not very heavy. I can manage. Uh, have a good trip. Yes, sir. Just fine. All right. All right. Well, uh, here, you get, put your bag right behind the seat here. Okay. You want to drive? Huh? Well, well, you can handle the buckboard, can't you? Uh, Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, well, Annie's real gentle. No sense to be scared of her. I'm not scared, Mr. Ponce. All right. I'm not scared of anything. All right, all right, Clay. It's, well, it's just that I don't know the way to the ranch, so maybe you'd better... Yeah, 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 I, I didn't think of that. Well, come on, hop aboard. There. All right, you all settled? Yes, sir. All right, Annie, come on. Let's go. Come on, Annie. Come on. That's your first trip west, isn't it, Clay? That's right. Yeah. Come on, Annie. Come on now. You know, you must have done some pretty smooth talking to persuade your ma to let you come out here all by yourself. My coming was her idea, Mr. Ponsett. Oh, oh, I see. Well, she thought, well, since I don't have any brothers and we've always lived in town, 
She thought maybe it would do me good to spend a summer on a ranch. I see. I see. Of course, I was all for it, too. You were? Huh? Oh, sure. Especially when I found out I was going to be staying with you. The other fellows, they sure were jealous when I told them I was going to be living with a six-shooter. Uh, well, we all pick up nicknames out here, Clay. Something to answer to besides your own handle. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, you know. In your case, it means something, all oh, right. No, no. Oh, no. Mom told me not to expect you to talk very much. Especially about yourself. Yeah, I guess she knows you pretty well, Mr. Ponsett. Well, uh, we used to be real good friends, your mom and pa and me. That was when they lived up in Dakota before you were born. Yes, sir. Uh, come to think of it, you look like, like your pa. Well, that's what people say, but I don't remember him. Funny, the only thing I can remember is sitting on his lap and playing with his watch chain. I remember that watch chain just as clear as day, but I just can't remember him. Wonder why that is. Oh, some things just stick with a person, I guess. Yeah. Uh, is it a big ranch, Mr. Ponsett, where we're going? Mm, no. No, it's not there. Really. Mr. Poindexter, he's the owner. Oh, he's got 500 head of cattle and a couple thousand acres, that's all. <laughs> it sounds pretty big to me. That's all what you're used to, I reckon. Yes, sir. <laughs> It sure was nice of Mr. Poindexter to let me move in with you. Oh, he was real pleased at the prospect of having an extra hand for the summer. There sure has been more than enough work for the three of us already. You mean there's only three people on the ranch? Well, there's four now, counting you. Oh, I thought there'd be a whole lot more than that. I thought there'd be ten or fifteen cowboys and a cook and some men to look after the horses and... Well, Saul Poindexter, he does the cooking himself and Jeff takes care of the horses. Jeff? That's Mr. Poindexter's son. Yeah, well, he must be about your age, Clay. Maybe a year or two older. Not as tall, though. Oh. Jeff will show you the ropes. He knows all about ranching. Oh? Oh, I, I expect there's plenty of things you can show him, too, about, about city life. I mean. Yes, sir. I expect so. Yeah, you'll probably have a real good time getting acquainted. Well, here's where we turn off. Easy, on Easy, Easy, enough. Easy enough. Expect you back so soon, Brett. Yeah, yeah. Uh, train was earlier than usual. Uh, Clay, that's Mr. Poindexter here. Huh? How do you do, sir? Yeah, pleased to meet you, son. Well, come on, come on. Jump down here so that I can get a look at you. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's we'll see here now. <laughs> Not much meat on your bones, but we'll soon take care of that. That's the bunkhouse over there, Clay. You can start getting settled while I'll eye on Hitch Annie here. All right, Mr. Ponsett. No, no, no. Hold on a minute, Britt. What? Well, there's no reason why Clay can't unhitch the buckboard. This is as good a time as any for him to start learning his chores. Oh, whatever you say, Saul. Think you can manage, Clay? Uh, I, I guess so. <laughs> Jeff will give you a hand. Uh, Jeff! Jeff! Where in thunder are you? Well, get out here! I'm fixing that trailer you busted yesterday. <laughs> I don't care what you're doing. I say get out here. You think I'm hollering just to exercise my lungs? Okay, okay. Keep your shirt on. Sure. Fine way for a son to talk to his father. Did <laughs> you see that you don't follow his example, Glee? No, sir, I won't. Yeah, well, what's all the ruckus about? Oh, hi, Britt. Yeah? Yeah, it's Clay Fenton, Jeff. Oh, howdy. Hello. I want you to help Clay unhitch the buckboard. In those duds? I've got some other clothes in my suitcase. Like mine? Well, not exactly. <laughs> Feels like we'll have to take Clay into town and fix him up with some Levi's and boots. Yeah, that was better. Well, if you don't mind getting them fancy pants all messed up. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> Come on in. Easy. Play, I'll put your suitcase in the bunk house. Good, thanks, Mr. Ponson. Yeah. Seems like kind of the quiet type, Rick. Well, this is all pretty new to him, so... Yeah, well, he'll get used to it. <laughs> Jeff will see to that. Yeah, yeah, I guess he will. Well, I better start fixing supper. I thought maybe we'd have Johnny cake tonight. How's that sound to you? Sounds fine. Sounds fine, so... Saul. 
Well, I took Clay's things into the bunkhouse and emptied out part of a wooden footlocker so he'd have some storage space. Saul and Jeff lived up in the main house. There was room up there for me, too, but I always felt more comfortable in the bunkhouse. And besides the way Saul snored, holy smokes. Well, you could hear it all the way down here when the wind was right. I thought about unpacking Clay's suitcase, but then I decided maybe he'd rather do it himself. Now, Saul was right. Eh? Clay sure was a quiet type. A lot more like his mother and his father. Ted Fenton had been about as lively as they come. He's always laughing and cracking jokes. I never could figure out why he sold that general store and moved back to East. But I, I suppose he had his reasons. Funny how a boy can grow up and be so different from his pa. A couple minutes later, I heard Jeff shout about something. All right, then prove it. Prove it, he ain't no dude. All right, I will. Now yeah, you're scared to well, I couldn't quite make out what Clay called back, but I sure could tell they weren't exactly hitting it off. Well, I didn't actually blame Jeff for not taking the Clay. The... Of course, in the city, it had been Jeff who had done the misfit, but we weren't in the city now. Anyhow, I waited for Clay to come back into the bunkhouse, and when he didn't show up, I walked outside to see what had happened to him. He wasn't in sight, but there was something going on out in the corral behind the barn. I got there just in time to see the apron face sorrel give a buck that sent young Clay flying clear over the corral fence. For a second, he, did, he didn't get up, either. Rich, Rich, you see that? <laughs> Clay, Clay, hey, you all right? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess so. I'm sure he's all right. Well, what the Sam Hill are you trying to do? He, he said I was a dude, that I, I couldn't stay in the saddle. You put him up to riding that sorrel, Jeff? Nope, I gave him his pick of the ponies. Now, you know that sorrel's a high binder. You should have warned him. It ain't my fault if he can't tell a spooky horse when he sees one. It was his pick. Uh, well, here, Clay, you think you can stand up? Yes, sir, I think so. Let's see. Yeah. Well, uh, doesn't seem to be anything broken. Uh, well, I... I guess I'd better change my trousers. They're all ripped up. You've got nobody but yourself to blame, kid. I told you you didn't know the first thing about riding a pony. You should have fessed up to it instead of making such a fool of yourself. I'll show you, Jeff. I'll show you I can ride. And I'll ride that sorrel, too. Just you wait and see. <laughs> You'd almost think he meant it, wouldn't you, Britt? He means it. City dude. He don't even know which side to mount. Yeah, yeah. But that won't keep him from trying the sorrel again. Well, if he does, he'll just get himself tossed off. Uh-huh. Well, maybe so. Let me show. We'll return to James Stewart as the six shooter in just a moment. Until recent years, misconceptions prompted a lot of people to feel that a diagnosis of heart disease was a death sentence. But today, thanks to medical science and the educational work of your heart association, we are learning that most people with heart disease can work and lead happy lives. This Valentine's Day is Heart Sunday. Remember to give to your local heart association because when you help your heart fund, you help your heart. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring... James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Well, Clay changed his clothes and we all had supper. Nobody said much while we were eating and nobody mentioned the sorrel again. I figured it was just as well to let the subject drop for the time being... And as soon as the dishes were washed, Clay and I headed for the bunkhouse. It was only 7.30, and that was half an hour before my usual bedtime, but Clay seemed pretty tired, so we turned in. I guess I must have been kind of tired myself, huh? Oh, oh. Anyway, the first thing I knew, I dropped off. Hey. 
it, it was getting on toward dawn when I... Hmm. One of the horses down the corral was sure upset about something. I... I turned over and I saw that Clay's bunk was empty. Clothes were gone, too. Huh. For a second, I wondered if he'd run off. Maybe he tried to go home. Then I heard him coming into the bunkhouse. Oh, his face was all wet and shiny like he'd been working up a sweat, and there were some dark stains on his pants and his shirt. And he undressed, and he put the clothes he'd been wearing in his suitcase. And then he crawled under the blanket on his cot, and he pretended to go back to sleep. He hadn't noticed that I was awake, and I didn't see any reason for starting a conversation at four o'clock in the morning, so I... Oh. Besides, whatever he'd been up to... I... Probably wasn't any of my business anyway. <sighs> Must have been a good hour later. I woke up again. I was dousing my face in a bowl of cold water. And washed the sleep away. And Clay drug himself out of bed and started to put on some trousers. I noticed they weren't the same ones he'd worn when he went out during the night. I didn't get a chance to say anything about it. Just then, saw Poindexter came charging into the bunkhouse like a bull after a red shirt. Ah, well, morning, Saul. Hey, Clay, I want to talk to you. Why, yes, sir. What's the matter, Saul? And I've just been down to the corral. That apron-faced sorrel has been whipped half to death. What? His flanks are cut to shreds. It's a wonder he can even stand up. Well, now, maybe he got caught in some barbed wire. I found the bull whip beside the fence. It's caked up with blood. Well, do you know anything about this, Clay? No. No, sir, not a thing. You're lying, you little... No, 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 Saul. Jeff told me about how the sorrel threw Clay yesterday. You knew about it, Britt. You were there. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Well? I... I didn't do it, Mr. Ponsett. If you didn't, who did? Me or Jeff or Britt? I... I... I don't know. Well, maybe if you were whipped the way that pony was, maybe then you'd tell the truth, you little... Now, easy, easy, Saul. Easy now. Get him out of here, Britt. Send him back home. Send him anywhere. But get him off my ranch. You... You didn't whip that pony, Clay? I told you I didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's what you told me. Why don't you believe me, then? Just because I'm a stranger, because I'm different from the rest of you, why do you have to pick on me? Well, there's one way to find out whether you're telling the truth or not. What do you mean? You said you'd ride that sorrel again. You said you'd show Jeff that you could ride him, huh? No, I would, too, if they'd let me. Well, I'll let you. Huh? But I sure hope for your sake you didn't whip that horse last night. What, what difference would it make? Well, horses are pretty smart animals. And when somebody's mean to them, they, they don't forget it. And they can be mean, too. That sorrel, especially. Oh? Uh, the person who beat him ever tried to climb on that pony's back, well... Uh, but as long as you weren't the one, well, you haven't got anything to worry about, have you? Come on, now. Let's go out to the corral, huh? I told Jeff to saddle up the sorrel and bring him into the yard, and Clay stood beside me, his eyes... Pushed wide open, staring at that stable door. He didn't move a muscle until Jeff led the pony towards us. I could see the cuts on the animal's flanks, and he walked with a sore, unsteady gait. And about six feet away, he stopped and flared his nostrils, and a little shiver jarred Clay's body. And then the sorrel let out a snort and reared. Clay caught his breath, and the pony sprang forward, almost tearing the reins out of Jeff's hands. No! Clay darted out of the way as fast as his legs could carry him. He ducked under the fence and kept running. Well, you satisfied, Britt? You believe he done it? Well, I was pretty certain of it all along, so... Well, I... then why'd we have to go through all this rigmarole? Uh, at least he won't have any reason to go on lying from now on. That's something. Yeah. I sure wish I could figure out what got into him last night. He's mean. That's what got into him. Mean, clean through. Well, kids aren't usually mean to animals, so... Your old friend Clay Fenton is. Take another look at my pony there. If there's any doubt in your mind. Oh. 
Well, we had breakfast, Saul, Jeff, and me. And then we did the morning chores. I hoped that Clay would come back of his own accord and face up to what he'd done, but by 10 o'clock, it looked like somebody'd have to go after him, so I saddled up Scar and started off. And it wasn't very hard to follow Clay's tracks across the prairie, and about 30 minutes later, I caught up with him. He'd stopped to rest in the shade of a chalk boulder, and he'd been too tired to stay awake. Whoa, Scar. Whoa. Oh, boy. Easy. Uh, Clay? Come on. Come on, Clay. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Ready to get back to the ranch? I... I can't. Well, you'll have to come back sooner or later, even if you don't stay, even if it's just to get your things. They know it was me that whipped that pony, don't they? When I ran off, that cinched it. Yeah, that cinched it. I had to whip him, Mr. Ponsett. I had to. You did, huh? I didn't know it would make him meaner. I thought... I thought if I beat him good, he'd be scared of me afterwards. And he'd let me ride him. I thought he'd be scared of me the way I was scared of him. You don't know much about horses, do you, son? I know plenty. That's why I hate him. Oh? It was a horse that killed my pa. Oh, I see. We were... We were visiting my Uncle Jack out in the country, and Pa was taking me for a horseback ride. I wasn't more than three years old, but he wanted me to get used to riding. And the horse threw us. Mom was watching from the front porch. She let out a scream. I told you it was funny what you remember from the time when you were a kid. Yeah. Well, I remember hearing Mom scream. I guess maybe it was the first time I ever heard her sound frightened. I guess that's why I remember. Mm-hmm. Well, afterwards, after that day, I had this mark on my forehead. I must have hit against a rock. And Pa, well, Pa was dead. I've been scared of horses ever since. I've always hated them. Yeah. Well, I guess a lot of times folks hate what they're afraid of. That's why Mom made me come out to this ranch. I didn't want to, but she made me. She said I had to get a hold of myself and start acting like a man. And I tried, Mr. Ponsett. I tried to ride that sorrel yesterday. You know I tried. Yeah? And when yeah. I couldn't hang on, well, I figured if I showed him who was boss, I figured then maybe he wouldn't throw me again. Now, whipping that pony the way you did, you could have killed him, Clay. Well, what's the difference? He's just a horse, ain't he? Uh-huh. Well, if you can't see where it was wrong, there's no point in me standing here jawing about it. So let's just... Clay. What? Yes, sir. No, don't move. No matter what happens, just don't move. What? Now do what I say. Just keep sitting the way you are. What's the matter? There's a rattlesnake edging towards your belly. Now go on. Go on. Keep on talking. Just keep on talking like nothing's the matter. Don't try to look at him. Just go on talking. Uh, I can't. No, there's no reason to get scared yet now. Uh, he may shove off by we buy and never know. Just keep on talking. Keep on talking now. I can feel him on my leg. Oh, you're imagining that, Clay. He's not even touching you. <laughs> can't you kill him, Mr. Bonson? If he starts to strike, maybe I can get off a shot. But he isn't striking yet. Now, sometimes rattlers go on about their business and don't strike. Now, so you just keep sitting there. Just keep sitting there and keep talking like everything was fine. Go on, son. Now, go on. Talk. Go on. Clay did his best, but his voice sure didn't sound very strong or confident. Not that I blamed him. He was in a tough spot. And the worst of it was I just couldn't risk shooting. The snake was right between us. As long as he stayed there firing at me... I'd be sure to get a bullet in the clay. The rattler would just move off a foot or so, maybe. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. He was getting nervous now. The tip of his tail jiggled the rattles back and forth. I inched my gun out of the holster, but I still couldn't fire. And the snake started to coil, and the rattle sounded even louder. And his head swung up, and his beady eyes seemed to pop out, and he was less than a foot away from Clay's arm, and... He was ready to strike if Clay just so much as twitched. For a second, that rattler just hung in midair. And then he twisted and he whipped towards Scar. And Scar reared. 
butt out of the way. I could get off a shot now, but I didn't have to. Scar's hooves were saving me the trouble. They came down again and again and again until the rattler's body was half buried in the ground. And then Scar backed off, and the snake gave a flip of his tail, but the rattlers were broken. And there wasn't any sound. All right, Clay. Let's go. Mr. Ponsett? Yeah? Why'd he do it? What? Your horse. Why'd he save my life? Huh? I guess he just doesn't like rattlesnakes, that's all. The snake wasn't bothering him. He was out of the way. What's his name, Mr. Ponsett? Scar. Scar? That's right. That's funny. I guess if I was a horse, that'd be my name. <laughs> well, it's... I... I'd like to ask you a favor, Mr. Ponsett. Go ahead. Do you think that sometime, if I stay on here this summer, I mean, well, sometime could I ride him? Uh, well, if we're going to get back in time for dinner, we're going to both have to ride him right now. Here, come on, I'll heist you up. Come on, here. It wasn't easy for Clay in the next few weeks, especially since Saul Poindexter said if Clay was going to stay on, he'd have to look after that Saul. <laughs> uh, pretty smart old man, Saul. Took time, lots of time. Lots of time before that pony to even let Clay come near him. But before long, the two of them were galloping all over the ranch from early morning to past supper. I guess maybe that apron face saw forgot the weapon Clay had given him. But I don't think Clay forgot it. The Six Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may soon be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Bill Johnstone, Bert Holland, and Sam Edwards, who played the part of Clay Fenton. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. By the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the six-shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Tonight, enjoy Sunday at Home with Jan Murray on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.